Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can check for the remaining space in local storage. So unfortunately there is no native method for this. There was one in fact in Internet Explorer but not in other browsers. So to do a check that's going to work across various modern browsers you have to do a little bit of work. So the solution I'm going to show you is going to give you in kilobytes the amount of space that you are currently using the amount of space still free, and also the total capacity of local storage for that domain. So what I'm going to do first is to clear local storage for the current domain because it might have something in there from earlier. So you might want to take this step as well. And then I'm going to set something in local storage. So I'll give it a key of use data. It's not going to contain actual user data. I just want to fill local storage with something after I cleared it. So I'm going to repeat the letter A as a string, let's say 10,000 times. So now there's something in local storage that we can test for. So the easiest thing to get is current usage. So I'll save this value in a reference called usage. So the way that you do this is to first of all stringify the entire contents of local storage. So you pass local storage into JSON stringify. Now the reason I'm doing this is that I can then count the number of characters that exist in local storage. Now the next thing to do is to get from this character count to the number of kilobytes currently being used. So let's assume for a second that each character is one byte. So what you do to get from bytes to kilobytes is divide number of bytes by 1024. Now it's not true that each character is one byte because under the hood, JavaScript uses UTF-16 encoding for strings. That means it's two bytes per character. So what you need to do here is to multiply this by two to get the current usage of local storage in kilobytes. So let's check that out in the console. So current usage, it's around 20 kilobytes. If instead of repeating the A string 10,000 times, I repeat it 90,000 times, then you see we're now using more of the local storage space. Now, the next thing we're going to get is the total capacity of local storage and then we can work out the remaining space in terms of the difference between total capacity and currently used. So the strategy for getting the total capacity of local storage is to push data into it until it is full and then to make this calculation again where we are stringifying local storage. So I'm going to be pushing data into local storage using a for loop but before that I'm going to specify how big the data chunk that's going to be pushed into local storage is each time. Now, because local storage can hold potentially millions of characters, you don't want to push in a string length of one each time because that means you would be accessing local storage potentially millions of times. That would be really slow and it would probably crash the browser. So a good idea is to push in a string that is longer in length. So I created a string repeat earlier. So I'll use that again, but I'm going to change the number of times that A is repeated to 10,000. So in most use cases, this is going to be accurate enough given that local storage can hold millions of characters. So now for the for loop, so the looping variable, I set to zero. So this is just going to track the number of times that I'm pushing this string repeat into local storage. Next, I'm going to create a variable called total, and I'm going to set the initial value of that to the value of to push. So I'm going to be pushing the value of total into local storage each time, and each time that is successful, I'm going to be increasing the string length of total by 10,000 by adding to push to it. Now for the next part of the loop, you would usually specify when it should break, in this case, I don't want it to break at a predefined point. I want it to break when local storage is full and an error will be thrown. So I'm going to leave this blank and I do want the looping variable 
to increase by one each time. So what the looping variable gives you here at the end is how many pushes into local storage before there was an error. So to be able to catch the error when it occurs, I'm going to add a try and a catch block into this loop. So in the try, I'm going to be trying to push total into local storage. When that is full and there is an error, then this catch block is going to run. And at that point, I want the loop to break. So inside try, I'm setting an item to local storage. So you want to make sure this has a pretty unique key because if there's a key with this name already, then it's going to silently overwrite it. So you want to come up with something unique and the value that I'm pushing into there is the value of total. So if this was successful, then I want to increase the string length of total by 10,000 by adding to push to it. So to do that, I set the value of total to the current value of total plus to push. So this loop is going to keep running until there is an error because local storage becomes full. And at that point, the catch statement is going to run. Now, before it breaks, ending the loop, I want to do a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get the capacity of local storage. And I can do that by simply doing the same calculation as earlier. Now that local storage is full, it's going to give me the total capacity. So I'll just save that calculation under a different reference capacity there. So now I have capacity and currently used. From that, I can estimate the free space. So I'm ready now to display these values to the console. So we'll start with capacity. And in order that we know what value it is, I'll add a string beforehand. And then afterwards, just a little kilobytes abbreviation there. And then the same for usage, which we calculated at the beginning before the loop. And now finally, for the free space available, that's its own separate calculation, capacity minus usage. And the final thing you want to do is to remove the item that you've created in local storage because at the moment the user's local storage space is full. And that's it. So let's take a look at the result in the browser. I'm going to delete the console log of usage from earlier on because we are now displaying that in the catch statement. So let's see the output in the browser now. So you can see that already took a bit of time to calculate and that is with a string length of 10,000. So you might consider increasing that string length a little bit so, so that the calculation is faster. I'll increase that string length to 100,000. So it's slightly less accurate now, but it's still pretty good. And now if we take a look at local storage, you see that there's just the user data there. No longer is that test key there that we use to estimate local storage space remaining. Now there's quite a few numbers after the decimal points here. So it's probably unnecessary to even have numbers after the decimal point. So you can easily fix that by wrapping each of the calculations in math.round. And remember, it's the same calculation each time for initial usage and also for capacity. So I can just copy and paste that in there. So this is how you check the space available in local storage. If you want to do it for session storage, then it's exactly the same method. So in order to be able to do it alongside this test, I'm going to create a new function called local storage check, which is a good idea anyway, because then the functionality of the local storage check is reusable. So then you can just call it in one line, calling local storage check. So I just clean this up a bit. So I'll create a new function here, session storage check. So it's going to do exactly the same thing 
as the local storage check, except it's going to be working with session storage. So to work with session storage, all you need to do is to replace the local storage instances with session storage. Okay, so just need to make sure that everything where local storage is referenced now refers to session storage. Now, if I save this, and now I call the session storage check function, I'm not calling the local storage check function, then I'm going to get the current available space in session storage. So it's telling me that the capacity is just over 10 megabytes. And of course, all of that is free because I haven't set anything for session storage. So that is how you can easily adapt the local storage space check for session storage. And that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.